Welcome back to Bear Radio Recommendations. I'm Julia, and while usually we do do tech recommendations, we're going to be moving away from the tech stuff and a little bit more towards the general podcasting how-tos or what you need to know. And for this month, I'm going to start with how to prepare yourself and your voice to actually sit down and record. So up top, just a couple things to note. First off, your best recording is going to come where you feel relaxed, comfortable and in control. So ahead of all of this, make sure that you are properly prepared and that your guest is prepared for what's to come. That said, too perfect sometimes sounds a little bit weird. So feel free to relax into it enough to make a mistake, ask a second question, have a little slip up or a giggle. Sometimes too perfect doesn't work and you sound like a robot. Surprise and confusion make you a human being. So feel free to include that. Now, I totally understand that seeing that blinking red light can be pretty intimidating the first time and even the 31st time. And your anxiety is probably going to be off the charts and that is then going to affect everything else. So I have a couple of tips for you on things to do and not do to just keep yourself nice and calm and relaxed and have your voice sounding as good as possible. So what I like to start with is first by moving my body. Sometimes I do a couple of laps of the room. If I can get outside ahead of a recording, I'll just go get some nice fresh air outside. I recommend that you slap your body awake a little bit like the theater kids do. Sometimes you're recording at the end of the day or early in the morning to squeeze this recording around your nine to five maybe and you're feeling a little bit slumped. So waking your body up really, really helps you. Another big thing is your breathing. Try your best to breathe from your belly rather than your chest and your throat. So when we get anxious and nervous, we start to really breathe from these tighter spaces and that's not much breath at all. So doing things like loosening up our shoulders, our wrists, rotating our arms around if we need to as well. I'm limited for space, otherwise I would do it a little bit more. Uh, Your hips, your ankles, start feet all the way up to your wrists and your neck just to loosen things up a little bit as well. The breathing from your stomach is a really important one because not only does it help you relax, it also helps your voice resonate. A great exercise to try is simply lie on the ground, spread your fingers out, sort of under your ribs and over your belly. And when you're breathing in, actively try to breathe into your stomach cavity rather than watching your chest rise and fall. Great meditation tip, but also a really good thing to do ahead of recording. And keep in mind as you're recording as well, if you notice yourself getting super tight chested, think about breathing back into your belly again. Humming also helps. I will say that Jill, my Bay Radio co-founder, is a huge fan of humming. Not only does she hum in the studio, she hums pretty much all day, every day. So her vocal cords are nice and loose. They are warmed. Just please try and avoid the... Try and avoid the radio trope of <clears throat> because something like that is going to scratch your vocal cords, scratch your throat, and like most itches, once you scratch it once, you're going to need to scratch it again. So you're going to most likely find yourself clearing your throat like that multiple times throughout your recording. So try and avoid it if you can. If you do have an itch in your throat, try a sip of water first or some warm honey tea, honey and lemon, and see if that works for you. If it doesn't, I can't stop you from clearing your throat. Just my advice. About what to drink and what not to drink, like I mentioned, a honey lemon tea will do you great, as will water. Big no-nos. No dairy and no caffeine. And I mean that for the entire day leading up to your recording. You will be haunted by that cup of coffee that you had in the morning if you're recording at 2 p.m. So with coffee, what you're doing is you're upping your adrenaline because of the caffeine, which leads to dry mouth. And dry mouth, you'll hear, is that kind of like sticky. There's not much wet in your mouth. So your saliva is kind of drying within you. And it's just that like that you're hearing in podcasts or ahead of the start of your sentences or your guest sentences. And then you're going to spend three hours trying to edit those little sounds out rather than just avoiding them in the first place. Same thing goes for dairy. Dairy increases your mucus. So it's going to make you phlegmy, it's going to make you slimy, and you're going to hear it in your voice. For somebody like me, I straight up can't eat or drink ahead of a recording, even if it's two hours before, because 
that is just how my mouth works apparently. Um, Whereas some people can have a whole meal and they sound fine. So take everything I'm saying with a pinch of salt, try it out yourself, but don't let the first time that you have a milkshake ahead of a recording be with a very important guest or an actual sit down interview. Figure out how your body responds to these things and then move forward from there. Also, make sure to have good posture. Leaning back like this and slouching is only going to, one, bring you further away from the mic, so you'd have to bring it closer, but two, it constricts your airways and it also brings the energy down. So being upright, being alert uh, are very good things to keep in mind. If you need a little assistance with that, I just encourage you to shimmy your chair up so that your butt is nice and snug in the back of the chair and your back is resting against it. I know a lot of podcasts is obviously for aesthetic, really like kind of the lounging look, while those are obviously a lot of fun, you would need to train yourself out of automatically slipping into a more calm, quiet, and casual way of speaking. It's kind of just how we work. Finally, with all of this, do not be afraid of silence or pauses. It is a podcast. It's not live radio. You can always go back and edit something out. So if you or your guest have something like dry mouth, you've noticed it, it's coming up in your headphones and it's hurting you every time somebody says anything, or you're just feeling pretty anxious and you're out of breath and you just need a moment to pause, take that moment to pause. A lot of the time we get asked, okay, but what if it's the guest and it's not me? How do I do it in a way that doesn't offend them? Pretend that it's you. Pretend you're the one that needs a break and encourage them to join you for a sip of water and a breather and maybe just kind of a quick walk around or a bathroom break. That way everybody gets to reset and you get to start fresh again. And that is it for my recommendations for this month. I hope they were helpful. I hope that you apply them to your podcasts and we'll see you again next month. Bye.